so this is the uh, the auction part of the show. There's, so the one thing that's also really cool about uh, Greenwich is there's an auction, right? Um, and so oh, you can see all sorts of stuff little, uh, that's available. This is a Lancia. A Lancia. Lancia. Okay. Lancia. I know nothing about this car. Okay. I've heard people call them Lancias, but it's an Italian name. It's Lancia. Okay. Okay. The Lancia Aurelia, Lancia before Fiat took it over, was a very innovative manuf manufacturer. Uh, they, the, on this particular car, is one of the first cars where you had the engine in front and the transmission in back. There you go. Yeah. So we ran into, yesterday we ran into Patrick and Bill Shea, who uh, owned the DeLorean from Back to the Future 3, the actual DeLorean from Back to the Future By 3. By the way, yeah. DeLorean, big Colin Chapman connection, and also big French connection because the engine was the DeVran V6, the PRV V6, and the configuration was very similar to the Alpine that we just saw. So anyway, they own the DeLorean from Back to the Future 3. They've uh, let us come up to their place and check it out, go for a ride. It's amazing. They've got a bunch of other Back to the Future cars from the movie, uh, the movies. And then uh, they're here looking at some stuff, and they pointed out uh, some really cool stuff that they might buy at the auction, but which got us thinking we should come in here. So we came in here yesterday, but some of these cars weren't here. You've got, uh, this was here yesterday. This is the Series 1 from yes. Shelby. This wasn't as successful as uh, I think they thought it would be. A lot of plastic inside, very GM at the time feel, very yes. Viper feel. Well, very and, Viper, uh, GM feel. Look at, look at the radio. Look at right. the, the I mean, the radio was a, it was a GM radio for sure, <laughs> right out of like a, a, a Suburban or a Typhoon at the time, or yeah. even a, uh, a Corvette. Right, uh, yeah. it has a lot of Viper plastic on it, which is obviously Chrysler Dodge. But this is almost identical to the center console of a Viper at the time. Yeah. This car did not do very well, and I think it was a huge surprise to them. I don't think there was anybody who really thought the car looked great. I think that was part of the problem. Well, it and also had an Oldsmobile uh, four cam V8 out of the Aurora. And and here's the other thing: at the time, they were also just starting to bring out the uh, the. Uh, the Shelby 427 Cobras yeah. that were the, the new version the of continuation them. The Cobras. continuation the Cobras. One, yeah, there's one, one over there. there. <laughs> so yeah. this is a, a Lagonda. Um, you've got over here um, Once again, this a is Maserati. Maserati. <laughs> right, here's the Countach. I mean, that's this is, this is one of the classic uh, sports cars from the 80s, exotic cars. This is one of the first supercars, right? Yes. And uh, every boy in, in the 80s it. had the poster and sought after this car. Uh, and there's one here that's uh, really nice that doesn't have the wing. It's a Euro spec car. It's, it's from the Paris show, uh, auto show. And this one is uh, got the wing. Now, the, we found out and yesterday. And a US spec bumper on it, too. The wing was uh, about a, a $5,000 option at the time. And it actually made the car more unstable to drive. They're primarily for show, but there's your continuation Cobra. They were impossible right to see out of. Uh, here's a, a AC Cobra 427. This is a continuation car, so this one's going to go for probably around 100 grand. Um, if Maybe it was, more. If it was a real one, it would go for you know millions. Oh, yeah, millions exactly. Um, but it's really the same car built by you know the same factory, uh, just many years later, uh, using the same chassis that were or extra chassis that were left over. I don't think this did as well as they wanted to either um, but they I think they had lost a little bit of their luster and also anytime you make a, a second version of the car um, years later it's a little harder well, but this is this is, this is the too. iconic American muscle car yeah, I mean because it has a CSX VIN number on it it makes it special but there are several manufacturers in particular even AC themselves factory 5 racing that make Cobras to order with whatever drivetrain you want and you still get the feel of the Cobra. It's a brand new car and other than the uh, VIN number, that doesn't offer you much more than that. So many kit cars out there for yeah. uh, the uh, Cobra uh, that it also, it also thins the market for anything that's not the original one. Barn uh, find, here we go. We're talking about the fixed head coupes, right? We're talking about, we were, we were just looking at one. This is an XK120 version of it, but this is what I'm talking about with a barn find. It, they left the dirt on it. Uh, uh, there's a placard on it, you can read some data off it. 1952 XK120 fixed head coupe. Okay. Vuvula's, uh, hello. And uh, I love that everybody's loving the, uh, the Lambo, uh, the Countach. We have another one but over here. Um, and by the way, they're saying that's that. not a stock Aurora engine that was in the uh, Series 1, by the way. It was not stock. No, but not by any stretch of imagination, but it was an Aurora engine. Right. How, what are they thinking this car is going to go for? Uh, 
considering its original state, untouched, barn find car, all complete. Yeah. Okay. They say 30 to 50. 30 to 50? Yeah, you think that's reasonable? You know what? Yeah. I mean, that would be, that is your entry into XK120 ownership. Cleans up real nice. I would not do a thing to it. I'd leave it alone. I'd clean it up and get it running. That's it. So one of the terrifics thought that this was a white-on-white -white Countach. It's not. Ooh. It's what somebody asked for, um, and uh, that is a uh, De Tommaso Pantera. I think this is a, in, in a later one, probably yeah, like an 83. 80 what? 87. 87. Even that late. Uh, this looks like it's in a pretty beat-up condition. What's this, what, are they, what are they expecting this to go for? Well, they say 25 to 35, and... Without reserve, so whatever whoever the highest bidder gets it, regardless. This would need a lot of love. I've been in a, a Pantera. Uh, I was in a '74. Uh, that car. Uh, well, then, oh, well, I wouldn't say a real one. They all are all real. No, but, but I, yeah, I'm saying I've been in. Uh, you know, anyway. So they're they're monsters. They're they're a lot of fun to drive and to, to ride in, and they got a lot of power. Mm -hmm. um, here's uh, one that's in a lot better condition. And uh, I think that this one is uh, 80 to 100,000, and this is an 83. So here's an 83 uh, De Tommaso Pantera. So there you go. Somebody asked us to show them a Pantera. Well, we delivered. Now, the two the Panteras. Are, the seats are interesting. Yeah, they look the like one they I was came in out of a Maserati by Turbo, right? Yeah. Because De Tommaso owned Maserati at the time. I, uh, the one I was in had racing seats. Had Recaro okay. racing seats and, and five-point harnesses. Well, they're ba basically made to order. So, so sure. I told you that the uh, Bill and Patrick Shea, who owned the DeLorean, were looking at cars. That's one of the ones they were looking at, the uh, Shelby GT500 Super Snake from 2012. Now, this is a real interesting thing. Your typical Dodge Ram truck, right? Except that it is a Shelby Ram prototype. So it's got 360 V8, single holly carburetor. It's been tuned to 300 horsepower. And... While the inside, the in, the seats look like they came out of the Shelby Charger, and like this, this was something that they were looking into possibly marketing with the Shelby nameplate on it, like they did with some of the other Chrysler models that we're looking at right now. I think that that would be a lot of fun to drive. What are they expecting that to go for? Probably uh, a good deal. I didn't deal. see the price on it. Yeah. But the the fact that it's a prototype, there's nothing else like it, and it came from the factory. That might recommend, especially if you're a Shelby fan, it might be an interesting thing, thing to add to your collection. These are all Shelbys over here. Yes. Uh, even uh, these uh, over here. But then you've got the uh, GT350 um, and the G another GT350, and these are beautiful. Uh, These examples. are what people think of when they think of Shelby production cars. Look the at Mustangs. this. This is the color they combination. They don't think very much of the Chryslers from the 80s. Blue with the white stripes. I like this uh, a lot. This is 1966. 60 to $80,000 they expect it to go for. Here's mm -hmm. a DeSoto, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why I had to show you that, but I just feel like you well, don't see DeSotos very often. So It's 1955. This yep. was Chrysler's first foray into, I guess, advanced design, the forward look, because the prior cars were actually rather dull. The Hemi came out in 51, and it's got a Hemi in it. It's got the same type of engine that's in the Cunninghams. Matt, this has got the shifter on the gauge cluster. Yes. Yeah. This is also, this is, that was a one-year deal. That shifter on the dashboard, they went to push-button shifters right after that. I'm not and a big fan of I'm not a big fan of this car, but this car is gorgeous. Uh, by the way, it got a CB radio in it. This is an automatic uh, and has a roll cage. It um, looks like it's had some custom work done to it because those yeah. seats are non-standard. Yeah, they are uh, pretty nice seats, by the way. This is a GT500 from '69. Uh, yep. Not my favorite year for that. 428 Cobra Jet, big block. '68 right here, 350, and this is this is a beautiful example. Uh, I, this is a manual transmission. Um, it's you know it's a little rough, but they're looking for this to go um, somewhere between 80 and 100. So you know that's a good place to get in on one of these, uh, yeah. and that's a, that's that's the way I think you know you should look at. If you're that's, shopping, that's, what, you're that's what you might be looking at. Yeah. Now a lot of these cars, as we said, were originally owned by Carroll Shelby, so they've got that pedigree. But here we are. This looks like you park it on the street, and you, um, it looks like a decrepit old Shelby Charger from. 30 years ago, except that it's got pedigree. This? This looks like a, a Chrysler LeBaron. Well, but it's Dodge a, Shelby Charger prototype. Yeah. Okay, again, 
It's all pedigree. They were because probably going to bring back the Charger the name. They did. Yeah, on the well, they did on this. And the Charger 2.2. Yeah. They did. They, ten ten thousand bucks, you could have this. This car was produced. Yeah. But you see how they rough got some it is. Cool stuff here. It's though. only now. This is a car that I want to show everybody because this inspired a lot of other cars after it. This is a Chrysler Airflow. And it's time. It was a very, very advanced design. It was. They moved the passenger compartment inside the wheelbase. The aerodynamics. It was the aerodynamics were good for their time. But it was a bit too radical for the buying public and therefore it didn't sell very well. As a matter of fact, the 34 actually had a waterfall grill. This was in a way to make it a little bit look a little bit more conventional than 35. The other thing about it is that if you see any slight resemblance to a Volkswagen Beetle, is because this car inspired the Beetle. Matt is a, uh, a Chrysler guy, by the way. He I, he loves Chrysler. He I love was. Them all. I'm, yeah. I grew up GM. My this, dad owns a Chrysler right now, and so I'm working. There's on There's a it. Lincoln Continental uh, convertible over here, by the way. This is the uh, car that was uh, in entourage in the opening sequence, and uh, also uh, technically the car Kennedy was killed yeah, this in. This is a later model. Uh, though. That was a '66, I believe. That was a stretch. Uh, yeah. This is cool. I always like these cars, suicide doors no, and everything. 67. 67. Um, again, this is a, a more rough. And the reason why you can car. tell it's a '67 is because of that steering wheel. Um, GM introduced the energy-absorbing steering column in '67, and Ford, to uh, comply with federal regulations, uh, they stuck an actual. It looked like a a big, large cushion in the steering wheel, so when you hit it it would crush instead of the steering column itself. Then I later on, they went to the, the standard steering column. I like column. the earlier ones better, and I prefer black. Here's uh, here's something interesting. I don't know why, but I think this looks cool. This is a Dodge Shelby Dakota prototype, 1988. I expect this to go for ten to 15000 This looks like it's just fun. See what's I don't in. know. It kind of looks like it was to compete with uh, not the Typhoon. What was the other one, uh, the pickup one? So the Typhoon cyclone. was no, the typhoon. Cyclone. Yeah, Cyclone and cyclone. Typhoon. But those cars, I mean, first of all, this is just a regular 318 with 200 horsepower in it. Those cars had the turbo 4.3 V6, which right. was sick. Yes, those cars were sick. Yes. You don't see uh, many of those anymore. And there weren't that many made to begin with. Yep. You don't see these a lot anymore. No, and they, they were... This replaced the Countach. Right, the, and a little bit more subdued in its styling. You know, a better performer. Well, this VT was, like, was the four-wheel drive version. This looks like a Lotus, uh, to me, this looks like a Lotus in front uh, and, and the way they did it. But this is a very early 1990s vehicle uh, yeah. in design. Absolutely. Done by Marcello Gandini. And I was crushed when this car came out. I was such a fan of the Countach. When I saw this, I, I was just crushed. I thought it was a disaster. And I, to this day, I'm not a big fan. Of, it didn't have the edginess of the Countach. It That's what it was. Basic. Yeah. And, it, and you still couldn't see out of it. It's not like they improved the car. Yeah. Here's a Z8, by the way. The Z8 was supposed to be, remember that 507 out mm -hmm. there? That was supposed to be the modern day version of it. And again, it was about as successful. It didn't sell well either. This 512 is a, Berlin a Boxer. Yep. This was the car that was sold directly opposite the Countach. Flat 12 engine, and it could do 175 miles an hour, and this was Ferrari's supercar before the Testarossa. I was never a big fan of this car. I, I, I just... I didn't love the styling, and I didn't think that the uh, the car had great characteristics. It didn't handle as well as I think it should have. Now, this is Mercedes style right here. And a lot of people had Matchbox version of this 280 SE Coupe. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's nice. It's just nothing, nothing that great in my mind. Hey, I got a weakness for the German Coupes. They're beautiful. Let's, let's just check in and on the auction. Right I'm there. so curious about this auction. I know that the Terrifics are as well. What's going on, Terrifics? You enjoying this? How you doing? All right, what do they got up here now? Okay, you've got a Corvette Grand Sport. Looks like it's uh, now 19... This is what's, uh, what's on the block right 1990, now. 1990... What do we got? A Corvette Grand Sport. 1996 Grand Sport. 96. It's one of the, the last of the C4s. Okay. What do you think this is going to go for? We'll stay for this one, and then we'll go back out and yeah. talk to more car people. A lot of Model Ts and Rolls Royces in here now. You had some cars in really bad shape. Oh, Fifteen thousand, it's up to. They got sixteen thousand for this. Would you buy this car? 
Let's get a shot of this. It's got a beautiful interior. I don't know if I'd get buy a shot it. of the uh, Grand Sport. Seventeen thousand. Yeah. Nineteen thousand. What do you think it's worth, Matt? Depending on condition, which I can't see from here. If it, if, if it hammers to thirty, I'd be surprised. I don't think it's going to go to twenty-five. I think they're done. They might be done at 22. It's 22. To die down a bit, isn't it? Yeah. 22. They got 22. 23,000. Look at that. I don't know. I could be wrong. You, you never know. You could get in an auction. You could get people getting going nuts. They could get really excited. 26,000. Getting there. But it's slowing down a bit, so it may hit 30. Twenty-six thousand just got over thirty. I mean, over twenty-five. Just over twenty-five. Here you go. I don't know, man. Twenty-six. That seems like a reasonable car for twenty-six. All right, let's go check out some real cars. Again, depending on condition. I mean, not that these aren't real cars, but I mean cars with people yeah, we can talk 26. to. Twenty-six. There you go. There you go. Twenty-six. Somebody should be happy about that. They got yeah. twenty-six. Here's a nine eleven Targa in the seventies. Nice example. I'll go for more than 26. Here, a little AC hatchback. This is another AC. This is called an AC Aseca, but a closed uh, car. But uh, you probably used, actually, I'm not a sure. A closed car as opposed to, oh, yeah. I guess. But look at the front. You mean a coupe? Yes. But look at the front. It's more like the uh, Cobra. Getting yeah. there. It's getting there. All right. Let's head back outside. We showed off the Penteras. We showed off the auction. But go to Mercedes. Now, this I want to show people this car. What, this is, what is this? Mercedes, that's Sunbeam Tiger. It that is it. another Shelby project. That's what it is, Sun, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, Sunbeam Alpine. Not, no relation to Renault Alpine. Regular four-cylinder sports car made by Sunbeam. Shelby goes and sticks a V8 in it, and it becomes a Tiger. And how about uh, this that you were saying? This is a 280 SL. Okay. I want, somebody, want one of the cameras to get a head-on shot of the car because I need it to explain why it's called a Pagoda Mercedes. A Pagoda. Pagoda. I've never heard this. Because the if you notice the roof, it curves downward. Yes. Yeah, that's why it's called a Pagoda Mercedes. But this is the first SL. And my father's friend had one of these. It, it, well, the first one after the 300, which is essentially a race car. This is uh, the SL of the 1960s. Six cylinder engine and still a light sprightly car compared to how much bigger and more bloated they got later. Now, now by the way, this is uh, basically 60s, 70s, 80s into like 91 mm -hmm. uh, was basically the same body style. Yeah. Which, by These the way, was... cars are 60s cars. Was the uh, Beverly Hills Cop car, right? Which one? That was the car that Axel Foley drove in Beverly Hills Cop. Which one was that? He drove a 300 SL yeah. convertible. Oh, okay. Red. You don't remember? Now you remember one. everything about cars. Not this one. No, no, no. Like in 1983. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. That's what, what I'm totally saying. About. Here no. you go. What's this Aston? Is this a DB5? It's a DB5. It's a, it's a 1964 DB5. So this is yep. the James Bond car. Yeah. yeah. Look, you even got a speaker in it, like James Bond had. Mm -hmm. This is a cool car. No ejection seat. No, are you sure? You want to test it out? No. Nope. Let's get a shot of the interior, the interior yeah. and the engine. This is cool. Yep. I mean, it's not every day you get to see an Aston like this opened up. Oh, let's get a shot of it. Three yeah. SUV carburetors, just like the XK. And then the the interior is very interesting as but well. Well, the Jaguar is sprightly and agile, and you know, more of a sports car. This one was a bit more heavy-handed, bit bulkier. Bond. Yeah. Yeah, I, this is, by the way, uh, yes, this is a bulkier car, harder to drive, not as nimble, um, and it's uh, it's, a, it's a gentleman's tour. I will yeah. say this, this car is, uh, it's banged up a little. It's, I mean, its body looks pretty decent, but its interior needs a little work. And yet, two million bucks? What? No kidding. They expect two to two and a half million dollars for this car. Look at the interior here. First of all, you got the speaker. That's a James Bond uh, accessory that everybody will remember. I don't know about that JVC head unit. <laughs> that looks like somebody put that in in uh, 1981 and left it there. And then there's a speaker in the middle of the back seat, which is very interesting. Um, well, I guess it's unrestored. Got a lot of gauges. And, uh, yeah, so an unrestored car that's kind of banged up and a little bit rough will get yeah. two to two and a half million dollars. What do you think, sir? 
I own one of these, uh, not a convertible, but a, a coupe. And uh, this is a, it, it's quite a unusual to have it this original. And that's what people are paying for now is originality. Uh, the seats aren't original, though that has to have been redone. But under here is pretty original. You like it? Yeah, it's a nice car. Do you enjoy driving yours? I enjoy driving my Morgan Plus 4 a lot more. It's a lot easier to wheel around. What do you think of the Greenwich Concourse de Elegance? Uh, it's good. It's gotten to be a much bigger show. I mean, I showed the first time about 15 years ago, and it's much bigger now. There are many more people here, many more cars, and I think it's got much more uh, of a standing than it used to have. It's uh, Yeah, it's in its 23rd year. It's a great show. Well, enjoy the uh, auction. Are you gonna? Are you thinking of placing a bid on this? Uh, no, I just. <laughs> no, I haven't got that kind of money for this. <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of the show. Well, Thanks for uh, sharing I'd your love experience you with us. Show people about the, uh, the, the the Aston Martins in particular. It says super leggera here, which means super light. That is the constru the construction of the body. A company called Touring. Yes, the English word is an Italian company. It's a method of construction where you have the sheet metal going over thin steel tubes. So that's why they called it super light. There you go. Here's a uh, Testarossa, by the way, that's part of the auction. Um, and uh, there are a couple of cool things. There are a couple of cool things uh, over here with the uh, out, out here. So you've got the Testarossa. Um, this is a, a very typical 1980s configuration, uh, red with saddle interior. Um, this is Ferrari red, and uh, pretty much everyone in the 80s and early 90s was red. Um, and the, except? The, the, except for the one from Miami Vice, Thank Don you. Johnson. And there were some that weren't, but the value of the cars in the 80s that weren't red were I mean, you, your car plummeted if it wasn't red in value in the 80s um, and in resale value. Uh, nobody wanted a black car or a silver car or a blue car. Um, now it's a different story. In fact, you know, they're very rare if you find them in different colors. I saw a Testarossa in like midnight blue ones with red seats. It was gorgeous. Um, this is interesting because the mirror is higher up than uh, normal and it's also only got one mirror. So we, we figured yesterday this is probably a Euro spec car. Um, I think this was Actually, a. When, when do we find out? I think this was a late 90s, I mean an early 90s car. Uh, no, this is a 86. So uh, like 92, 93 I think was the last year they made. It would have been the, uh, the M model. And then uh, before that it would be, this doesn't have the uh, prancing horse on the front. That's a very interesting thing. No, not here, thing. just here. No, but the other ones yeah. do. Oh, so that's, that's very interesting. Well, anyway, so this was the car from OutRun yeah. and uh, the video game. And... Um, we figure this is a Euro spec car. Well, the only reason I'm not so sure is because I looked inside, checked the speedometer, and it's in both miles and kilometers. If it were Euro, pure Euro, it would just be in kilometers. I don't know. It's very interesting, though. Unless it was modified afterward. Um, that's an iconic, uh, you know, car from the 80s. Um, this is a uh, Shelby that uh, GT500. Uh, this was apparently um, a 2008 that was uh, serial numbered to the date of Carroll Shelby's birthday, and this is one of the other cars Patrick and uh, Bill Shea are looking at bidding on. This is super cool. This is uh, a, a Land Cruiser, um, a BJ40, um, and we checked this out. It's all redone inside. Get a shot of the interior. It's just stunning. Uh, let's see where we can do that. Um, just get a shot of that interior. In a way, it's almost done in, in uh, G-Wagon style. Yeah, it's, it's well, a, I don't know if, if they went that far, but they certainly uh, went further than what an, uh, an FJ or a BJ should have um, inside. it. But it's super cool looking, and it's super fun looking. I, uh, I think they did a great job restoring this and, and making it fun and kind of modding it out. All right, let's uh, head this way a little bit more. You're watching live continuing coverage of the Greenwich Concourse de Elegance here in Greenwich, Connecticut um, on Be Terrific.